Okay. So let us start. Let them join later on. Okay. Since I am recording these lectures and uh, um, putting it on the uh, our Google Drive, you can refer it later on even. Okay. So in previous class, we have seen with uh, these two port network functions. So um, uh, these two port network functions. Uh, as network function means same parameters which we have calculated in uh, time domain z parameter y parameter uh, h parameter and abcd parameter so if we are transferring all these instead of in time domain if we are transferring it in laplace domain and uh, finding uh, these ratios uh, they are called as network functions so these network functions are they may be uh, means in your syllabus there are the emittance functions are included for one port and two port so emittance function means admittance function and uh, impedance function and admittance function okay so that means z parameters and y parameters in laplace domain so we have seen this uh, for one port network we have seen and for two port network also we have seen in last lecture so driving point impedance functions two driving point impedance functions are there input driving point and output driving point that is z11 and z22 so uh, in laplace domain there will be uh, driving point impedance functions so these are referred as network functions so impedance functions are z11s z22s then admittance functions are driving point input and output they are y11 and y22 then uh, the transfer impedance functions and transfer admittance functions that is z21s and z12s y21s and y12s and then voltage uh, ratio transfer function and current ratio transfer function that is nothing but this is the voltage gain and current gain that is the ratio of voltage v2 to v1 and i2 to i1 and all are in laplace domain okay so we have seen this then we have seen this numerical also if it is asked to find the z parameters of this network so uh, network function then z of s you have to find means z11s z12s z21s and z22s so for finding z parameters what we require this v1 and i1 are known to you v2 and i2 are known to you these are the port voltage and current okay so in terms of voltage we want the current equations uh, that is v1 and v2 as a function of i1 and i2 then the coefficients of i1 and i2 they are nothing but the uh, z parameters so if you want to find network functions that is uh, z parameter functions then you have to transfer uh, transform this in uh, laplace domain that is s domain so this step is you transform this network in laplace domain that is Will be replaced by only the value of R. Will be replaced by L2S. Mic बंद कर रहा है. Mic बंद कर रहा है. Mute कर रहा है. Mute. Mic mute कर रहा है. inductance l value is replaced by ls capacitor c value is replaced by 1 by cs okay so same we have done 1 farad will be replaced by 1 by s 2 henry replaced by 2s 1 farad by 1 by s 2 henry replaced by 2s then v of v1 of t will be replaced by v1 of s v2 of t it is replaced by V two of S. Okay. 
then okay. i1s i2s and i3s three currents mesh currents we have assumed and then we have solved this by by uh, applying kvl so after applying kvl you will get the equations in terms of i1 and i2 in terms of i1 and i2 and these coefficients are nothing but your z11 z12 z21 and z2 शिक्षण <laughs> 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 okay so you have to determine the transfer function of this circuit who is this bloody fellow okay determine the transfer function of this circuit it is given so this is 4 ohm and 1 by 40 farad v1 of t v2 of t so these are uh, given to you so we'll transform this uh, network first into the laplace domain so v1 of t will be replaced by v1 of s v2 of t will be replaced by v2 of s then 4 ohm it will remain as it is then 1 by 40 that will be replaced by 1 upon uh, 1 upon 40 reciprocal of it that is the capacitor value divided by uh, into s so 1 upon 1 by 40 s will be 40 upon s that is the value of this capacitance now uh, it is asked to find it is asked to find yes priyanka do you have any uh, difficulty okay no sir okay fine so uh, if you want to uh, uh, find the transfer function of the circuit so what do you mean by transfer function transfer function is nothing but it is the ratio of output upon input in laplace domain so here input port is here this v11 dash and output port is 22 dash so v1 of t is your input voltage and v2 of t is your output voltage so that means if you will transform this network and then after transforming this network in laplace domain if you will find the ratio of v2 of s upon v1 of s then you will get the uh, this transfer function okay so in order to find this v2 of s if you want to find v2 of s it is drop across this impedance that is capacitance and how to find drop across this so you find first the current flowing through this network and then that current into this value of impedance that is 40 upon s will be the value of v2 of s so you how to find current you apply simply uh, ohms law to this particular loop that is v upon the impedance will be the current so v1 of s divided by 4 plus 40 by s so v1 of s upon 4 plus 40 by s will be the value of current flowing through this circuit and that current into this impedance 40 by s that will give you the value of v2 of s now from this if you will simplify this it is becoming as 40 v1 of s divided by 4s plus 40 that is 10 v1 of s upon s plus 10 you take v1 on this side so it will be v1 upon v2 sorry v2 upon v1 
So that is equal to 10 upon s plus 10. So 10 upon s plus 10 is the nothing but the transfer function which is asked in this particular numerical. So if you want to find transfer function, you have to find output upon input in terms of Laplace transform, means in Laplace domain. Okay. So similarly, you can find this transfer function of this network also. You replace this 2 Henry by 2s, 20 ohm as it is 20 ohm, v1 of t as v1 of s, v2 of t as v2 of s, and then find out drop across this resistance that is this current into this resistance value and that is nothing but your v2 so in order to find this current it will be v1 of s divided by 2s plus 20 so that is this current and into 20 will be this drop across this resistance and that is nothing but v2 of s so from this you can find the ratio and that is nothing but the transfer function now, for this particular parallel RC circuit, if you want to find this uh, again transfer function, it will be Laplace uh, in Laplace domain. This is the current input current, and this voltage is say output voltage. So V of S upon I of S will be your transfer function. So V of S is nothing but it is 1 upon G plus SC. In transform domain, this C will be replaced by 1 by SC and this resistance R will be remaining as it is. So we have found out the admittance from this parallel combination or you can find resistance even impedance A into B upon A plus B. So equivalent impedance you can find. This current is given to you. You can find this voltage drop across this particular resistance and from that you can take the ratio of V of S upon I of S and that is nothing but 1 upon G plus SC. Similarly, you can find for this series RLC circuit also, this voltage source V uh, of T is given to you, R, L and C. So R is replaced by uh, R only. L is replaced by SL and C is replaced by 1 upon SC and voltage across this capacitor it is V of S so you want to find this V of S upon uh, V of input or even you can find the current you can take current as output and current divided by Laplace transform of current divided by Laplace transform of input voltage that will be another transfer function. So these type of uh, numericals may be asked in the exam. So I hope you will be able to solve such type of numericals. Okay. Then poles, zeros and S plane. So what do you mean by poles and zeros? So your transfer function as we have seen, the transfer function is uh, defined as the Laplace transform of output divided by Laplace transform of input. Now, this Laplace transform of output divided by Laplace transform of input, let us say that is H of S is equal to M of S upon N of S. So that is numerator and denominator. This you can either represent in the form of POS or SOP. That is sum of products or product of sums. So in these two forms, you can express this and then if you are expressing it in POS form, that is product of sum, that is then the roots of this numerator, they are referred as zeros and roots of denominator, they are referred as poles. So from these poles and zeros, that is the roots of numerator and roots of denominator, we can find whether these poles and zeros they are they may be of uh, different types that is they may be there may be repeated roots that is repeated poles and zeros there may be simple or single roots so that is single poles and zeros or they may be complex conjugate poles and zeros so depending on these we can find whether the 
we can comment on stability of the system whether the system is stable or not okay so how to plot these poles and zeros so for plotting zeros will represent them in a form of a hole and for अरे लेक्चर चाल है मैं नंतर कॉल करतो ओके फाइन so for uh, um, how to plot these poles and zeros so in order to plot these poles and zeros we have to first find out these poles and zeros and then plot them on this s plane so for plotting s plane s is uh, equal to sigma plus j omega so sigma will be your real axis and j omega will be your imaginary axis so on this real and imaginary axis you can plot these poles and zeros so for plotting these poles that is the um, roots of this denominator you can plot them pole as a cross so simply we'll plot it by marking a cross at that particular point and a hole for marking this zero that is zero o okay so such plotting you can do if they are simple poles s plus 2 let us say here s plus 2 then that root will become s equal to minus 2 so at minus 2 you will mark a cross so that it will be a pole if uh, at numerator it will s plus 4 then s is equal to minus 4 so at minus 4 you will plot a zero or o okay so such plotting you have to do okay so after this let us say ha huh, this is the function f of s transfer function is given to you 10 into s plus 1 s plus 2 divided by s plus 4 s plus 5 s plus 8 so these are the roots okay so 10 is your scaling factor so nothing to do with this scaling factor now s plus 1 and s plus 2 so these are the two roots of numerator so roots of numerator they are nothing but your zeros so there are two zeros in the system at s is equal to minus 1 and s is equal to minus 2 so here we have plotted s is equal to minus 1 so on this uh, real and imaginary axis so this is a real axis is marked as sigma and imaginary axis it is marked as j omega so this we are calling it as it is a s plane okay so on this s plane will plot this s equal to minus 1 and s equal to minus 2 as zeros so we'll plot at minus 1 and minus 2 we'll plot this o or zero so these are the zeros and these are the poles at s denominator roots of denominator they are the poles so s equal to minus 4 s equal to minus 5 and s equal to minus 8 so at minus 4 minus 5 and minus 8 we'll mark cross so these are the poles so there are three poles in the system and two zeros in the system okay so this is the transfer function so in this way you have to plot the poles and zeros of a transfer function now what is the importance of these poles and zeros so from this plot of uh, poles and zeros in s plane we can define whether the uh, system given to you is stable unstable or marginally stable so that stability of that system will depend on this particular poles and zeros and if these poles and zeros are given to you you can find the values of components even in the network that is the value of r l and c you can find if values of r l and c are given to you that network whether it is a stable or unstable or marginally stable that you can comment by plotting their 
holes and zeros in this s plane okay so such type of uh, two types of numericals may be asked in the exam uh, values of rl and c are given to you uh, a network is given and from that you find out where are the poles and zeros of the system and comment on the stability of the system or in the reverse way uh, transfer function is given to you that is poles and zeros uh, that is the um, uh, ratio of your numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial it may be given to you find out roots of numerator and denominator roots of numerator they are referred as zeros roots of denominator they are referred as poles from them you plot them on this s plane and from this you can determine the stability now how to tackle such type of problems so let us say first right uh, first type of problem find the driving point function z of s from the network and draw the pole zero plot of it so you have to uh, the values of r l and c that is network in the network the values of r l and c are given to you and you need to find the transfer function or maybe the driving point function or maybe the uh, network function so these functions you have to find and then you have to plot it on the s plane okay so first step is if the values of r l and c are given to you your first step will be to transform this network in s plane or s domain that means to take the laplace transform of that so first you take transform of this so resistance will be as it is resistance inductance will be replaced by l into s the value of l here is 1 so 1 into s will be this and the resistance will be as it is 1 ohm and this capacitor value it is replaced it is 1 farad so it will be 1 by s so uh, these are the values of r c and l so this is the transformed network now from this transformed network let us simplify it so this impedance of this branch it is 4 plus s i have represented it here and impedance of this this is a parallel combination so a into b upon a plus b so it is coming as 1 upon s plus 1 so these two resistances are in series impedances are in series so what will be your z in or z input impedance so z in of s it is equal to 4 plus s that is this impedance plus in series with this 1 upon s plus 1 so 4 plus s plus 1 upon s plus 1 take lcm of this so multiply this by this particular thing so 4 plus s into s plus 1 will be here and plus 1 divided by s plus 1 so it will come to s square plus 5s plus 5 divided by s plus 1 so this is now the network function so that is the ratio of your numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial now what you want to find find out roots of this numerator polynomial they are nothing but zeros and roots of this denominator polynomial they are nothing but poles so here only one pole is there s plus 1 now here it is a quadratic s square plus 5s plus 5 so you have to find the roots of this quadratic so i hope you know how to find roots of this quadratic so first you have to uh, click on this uh, uh, mode so mode switch you will press once twice and thrice till this equation will arrive so equation is there so you press one so equation is there you want to solve this equation you want to find roots of this equation so use this so that you will find what is the degree of this equation so degree maximum uh, coefficient of s it is 2 here so i'll press 2 after this degree so i'll require now the coefficients so what is the coefficient of a b and c that is what is the coefficient of s square what what is the coefficient of s and what is the constant term so here s square coefficient is 1 so i'll press here 1 then again i'll press equal then coefficient of s 
it is 5 so i will press here 5 then again equal so you will ask me what is the value of c it is again 5 so i will press here 5 and again if i will press equal i will get the root first root so it is coming as minus 1.38 so value of s equal to 1 minus 1.38 so what will be the root root will be s plus 1.38 Okay, and for second root, I'll press this equal sign again, once again. So I got minus 3.61. So minus 3.61, minus 3.618, so I rounded it off to 3.62. So S equal to minus 3.62. So S plus 3.62 will be the second root. So I have got now the roots of numerator as well as roots of denominator. Now roots of this numerator they are nothing but zeros and roots of denominator they are nothing but the poles. So my zeros are s equal to minus 1.38 and s equal to minus 3.62 and my pole is at s equal to minus 1. So again you draw the pole zero plot for that real and imaginary axis you plot and then plot pole only po one pole is there so i'll mark pole it is at minus one so at minus one i'll mark a cross and then at minus 1.38 and minus 3.62 so minus 1.38 and minus 3.62 i'll mark to o that is two zeros that's all so this is your solution of this numeric so what is asked this network is given to you any network and from that network either you find driving point function and then draw the pole zero plot and comment stability so stability we are not seen yet but how to plot its pole zero plot so that we have seen okay if there are complex conjugate poles so that is if z equal to minus 2 plus 3j and minus 2 minus 3j such complex conjugate pair is there then you have to plot it like this so minus 2 that is real axis minus 2 here then plus 3j and minus 3j so plus 3j will be my uh, plus 1j plus 2j and plus 3j so i'll mark here it will be 1 0 or pole whatever it may be and then minus 1 minus 2 and minus 3 so minus 3j so minus 2 minus 3j will be a polar zero plotted here okay so in this manner you have to plot the, all the roots it may be a real root it may be a repeated root if it is repeated then if it is a repeated pole at 1 s plus 1 bracket square or s plus 1 and s plus 1 then you have to mark two cross very near to each other at point minus 1 s equal to minus 1 okay so such is the plotting now calculation of component values from pole zero diagram so if a pole zero diagram is given to you then how to compute the value of uh, r l or c from that so let us say a serial rlc circuit has a scaling factor of 5 it is given to you and uh, find its uh, for its driving point admittance that means you want to find driving point admittance function first and then from that admittance function you will find the values of that uh, components of that network okay so these are the two poles complex conjugate poles are given in the uh, s plane that is minus 1 plus 25j and another is at minus 1 minus 25j so these are the two complex conjugate poles and one zero is there at origin so s equal to zero so these are the three roots or three poles and zeros are given to you uh, in this pole zero diagram and uh, it is mentioned that it is a series rlc circuit now your value of this admittance function so any function, uh, maybe transfer function, impedance function, admittance function, 
that will be in the laplace domain so y of s it is equal to k into k is your scaling factor so scaling factor into some numerator roots divided by some denominator roots numerator roots are nothing but your zeros denominator roots are nothing but your poles scaling factor is given in numerical it is value as 5 so value substitute value of k as 5 then s minus where is zero zero is lying at origin so here s is equal to zero so it will be s minus zero or simply s will be at the numerator at denominator it will be s equal to minus 1 plus j25 and s equal to minus 1 minus j25 that means s plus 1 minus j25 and s plus 1 plus j25 will be the roots of denominator okay so from this pole zero diagram we have found out what is the transfer function or it is the driving point admittance function so y of s equal to 5 into s divided by s plus 1 minus j25 into s plus 1 plus j25 now if you will simplify this this is nothing but your 5s at numerator and at denominator it is a minus b uh, jb and a plus jb if these are the two roots their multiplication will be a square minus b square that is s plus 1 square and plus uh, sorry minus j square 25 square right so s plus 1 square is s square plus 2s plus 1 and what is 25 square it is 625 into j square and j square is nothing but minus 1 and here it is minus sign so it will become plus so it will become y of s equal to 5s divided by s square plus 2s plus 626 now this is your y of s that is transfer function or it is the driving point admittance of this particular network and we know that it is a series rlc network so for series rlc network if we will transform this in laplace domain we know that r will be replaced by r l will be replaced by sl and c will be replaced by 1 upon sc now if you will find driving point admittance of this particular network it is if you want to find impedance then z of s equal to r plus sl plus 1 over sc so this is z of s if you will take reciprocal of it 1 upon z of s that will be your y of s that is nothing but r 1 upon r plus sl plus 1 upon sc so that we have already found out it is coming as sc upon s square lc plus src plus 1 so this is the say equation number 2 that is the admittance function now you compare this equation 2 with this equation 1 which we have found out so 5s at numerator and here at numerator what is there s into c right so uh, first uh, we will divide it by lc because we want at here your s square coefficient is 1 so we'll first divide this circuit uh, this equation by uh, denominator by lc so that the coefficient of s square will become 1 so we'll divide whole equation numerator as well as denominator by l into c so it will become y of s equal to s into 1 by l s square plus s into r by l plus s into 1 by lc now you compare this equation and your this equation coefficients of s in numerator coefficient of s square in denominator s in denominator and constant term in denominator okay so for simplicity i have written this same equation previous equation here now compare this so 1 by l is nothing but 5 1 by l is nothing but 5 this 1 is 1 
then r by l is nothing but 2 and 1 by lc is nothing but 626 okay so from this equation we'll get 1 by l as 5 so l value will become 0.2 henry r by l as 2 substitute the value here again so we will get r equal to 0.4 ohm and substituting values of this l here we will get 1 by lc equal to 626 so c value it is coming as 7.98 millifarad so we we'll, we were able to find the values of r l and c from this we will substitute it in this circuit so we got the values of r l and c if a pole zero plot is given to you and if the value of this means uh, r l c are given to you we will be able to find the transfer function and the pole zero plot so i hope you have understood both these cases now for discussing the stability uh, i don't think time is time will permit us but we'll continue we'll continue it in next time also we'll repeat the same okay so now till this time from pole zero plot you will be able to find the values of r l and c that is the component values of the circuit okay and if the values of components are given to you we will be able to find the pole zero plot of it now from this pole zero location or position in the circuit uh, uh, in the s plane will be able to find whether the system which is given to you it is a stable system it is a unstable system or it is a marginally stable system so how to find that the key points are if at time t equal to infinity if your function tends to zero then it is a stable system if at time t equal to infinity if that function tends to infinity then the system is unstable and at time t equal to infinity if your function is within certain limits then it is a marginally stable system now how to decide the value of this function whether it is tending to zero whether it is tending to infinity or whether it is tending in a particular limit okay so for that purpose let us take uh, one pole is lying at left hand side of this s plane so only a single pole is there let us say it is lying at s equal to minus 1 so only one pole so how will be transfer function of this particular system you can write f of s equal to 1 upon s plus 1 because s plus 1 will be the only root at denominator because one pole is there at s equal to minus 1 so s equal to minus 1 so that root will become s plus 1 and there is no zero in the system so there is no root on uh, at the numerator so it will be only 1 upon s plus 1 so this is f of s if f of s is 1 upon s plus 1 what is its inverse laplace transform we know that f of t will be e raised to minus t minus 1 into t this coefficient so e raised to minus t and if you will plot e raised to minus t it is such type of plot so e raised to minus t so such systems are referred as stable systems okay now let us assume that this particular pole is lying on right hand side that is this pole let us say it is at s is equal to plus 3 so i have marked here one pole at s is equal to plus 3 here is your origin so plus 1 plus 2 and plus 3 so one pole is there at plus 3 so how i'll represent it it will be f of s equal to 1 upon s minus 3 because there is only one pole at s equal to plus 3 so the root is only s s minus 3 and that root is your pole so it will lie at denominator so it will be 1 upon s minus 3 as there is no zero in the system numerator will be only 